¿Qué te hizo decidir ir a la Universidad de Puerto Rico? Era bien raro porque siempre, yo siempre quise ir como una escuela en el, en el este, ¿verdad? Como Florida, como eh, Nueva York, algo así. Pero un día yo pensé como, ah, yo quiero ir a Puerto Rico. O yo quiero aplicar a una universidad de Puerto Rico. ¿Qué tal mi gente? Welcome to another episode of my world. If this is your first time on my channel, I would like to invite you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to stay updated with all the latest of videos. In today's episode, we have a very special guest that was actually born and raised in California, but decided to move to a whole different country. I'm talking about Puerto Rico. So on this journey, also she will be talking about her journey to learning Spanish and some of the obstacles that she had to go through to be able to speak the language and you know basically just tell us what it, what is her experience while living in a latin country so i hope you guys like this video please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and comment as well um yeah enjoy the video my people here it is Wow, well, let me people today i have for rosie thank you for um allowing me to have this opportunity to work with you so the reason why we are doing this interview today because you did something what a lot of people wouldn't even dare to do so are you ready yes the first question that i have here for you is what inspired you to want to learn spanish for rosie okay so when i was well when i was a little younger when i was in about elementary school probably um i heard this story from my grandpa because he didn't really know where his family was from so he started telling us that they were probably from somewhere like an island like puerto rico and so mm -hmm. after that i think i kind of was just like oh my gosh puerto rico what's that where's that and so i got super <laughs> interested and so i was like oh they speak spanish but before that i kind of already had wanted to to learn spanish i don't know why it was just something that i always wanted to do I don't know who spoke to me in Spanish when I was younger, but I kind of just, it felt right, I guess. So I started learning it from there. And I think it was honestly just because my grandpa had mentioned Puerto Rico and I wanted something along those lines, whether it was Puerto Rico, um, La República Dominicana, whatever it would be, you know, I wanted something like that. And when he said Puerto Rico, it just kind of clicked and I started learning Spanish. Oh, that's dope. That's really dope. I like that. <laughs> So I guess that that you see sometimes like then things them just run in our bloodline and we not even know it. You know, you just felt the need to want to do it and it just happened for you. Exactly. Okay. Next question. When did you first start learning? I want to say I started learning, learning Spanish. I would say middle school. I started asking some of my friends like, oh, can you teach me? A lot of my friends were Mexican or some type of Hispanic or Latino. So I started asking them, you know, can you teach me some words, phrases? And I started learning little by little. So I would just ask them, you know, I think I started learning like, oh, yo tengo hambre, tengo sed. Or como, I remember learning like árbol, araña, just like little words that I learned here and there, little by little. And then taking four years in Spanish. So I think that's kind of where it started. Okay, that's, that's really interesting. Next question is, do you remember your first real Spanish conversation? Can you tell me about it? I want to say it was, wasn't that long ago, actually. It was <laughs> when I was, I know, it was when I was like 16. Um, and I had a boyfriend at the time who was Peruvian and Mexican, and his mom was from Mexico, and she would always speak to me in Spanish. And... Um, I think those were my first real, real conversations that weren't like short and quick or, you know, little thank you or hello, goodbye type conversations. I think was with her when she would like yell at me or when she would ask me questions and stuff. My brain was working like so hard during those times. So I would say those are my first real, real conversations. 
What was one of your biggest struggles while learning? One of my biggest struggles was definitely learning how conversations go. I think conversational Spanish is is one of the more important things, but it's also for me a harder part of learning Spanish. I think it's easier to learn like words, phrases, things like that. So I think me learning to actually conversate and have conversations, full blown conversations in Spanish was a little difficult. Before I moved here, I didn't always have someone to speak with. A lot of my friends who spoke Spanish didn't speak it that often. Um, my family doesn't speak Spanish. So I think just learning conversational Spanish was a lot more difficult for me, learning where to put certain words and things. That's dope. So you're, you're saying basically that you're the only person in your family that speaks Spanish. <laughs> yes. Do your family look at you like any type of way? <laughs> I I think so. I think my mom, my mom always tries to show me off. My mom's like, oh yeah, she speaks Spanish. Like whenever there's someone that speaks Spanish, my mom's a show off type. And the rest of my family, they're just kind of like, yeah, that's cool. You know, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Are you should feel proud of yourself. I do. How did you even overcome those struggles? I think just doing it. I think Everyone always says, you know, just go for it. I'm a very shy person. So I have a problem. I have trouble just, you know, going for it. But I think honestly, just speaking and doing it, living it, it honestly has taken me probably up until now living in Puerto Rico to be comfortable with having those conversations and to get better at having those conversations because I simply have to have them and I have to, you know, speak. And I think that's the easiest way to get over it and to, to get through it is to speak and to have those conversations that you're afraid to have definitely how long did it take you to become fluent i don't think i'm there yet at all really there's so well, many words that i haven't learned and so many things that i haven't learned so <laughs> i would say i'm going on my sixth year maybe but you know that's like not me practicing every day that's not me you know opening spanish books all the time to to learn um but me personally i would say it's probably i would give it the six year mark so what advice do you have for someone who wants to learn the language i would say if you're someone who's still in school, like I was in school, take Spanish classes, or even if you're not in school, I think taking Spanish classes is really helpful, uh, especially when you're starting out. Um, it's like a baseline, kind of. I remember I used Duolingo, different Spanish apps while I was in my Spanish classes, too, and that really helped me. But I would think, I think what helped me a lot, a lot was listening to music in Spanish and watching movies and TV shows in Spanish. I think that helped me. A lot. I learned a lot of my words from different movies, TV shows, songs, if I would like search up certain words that I didn't know. And I can still remember those words to this day, their meaning and everything simply from, you know, listening to that song. So it's kind of a, it's not like a major way to learn Spanish. I wouldn't say it's, it's definitely not the only thing that you have to do, but it's very, very helpful. Definitely. And I agree with you again, because those are all things that I also talk about. Tell me about your most embarrassing moment while learning the Spanish language. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I have one, I have one. I came up with one. So, <laughs> I went to a Krispy Kreme when I moved here with my mom. Um, and my mom doesn't speak Spanish, obviously. So I was, I took it upon myself as usual, as I usually did to, you know, try and talk to the person and tell them what we wanted. So my mom's like, I want, you know, however many glazed donuts. I think it was like a dozen or like something along those lines. And so I'm like, okay. So the woman starts talking and I tell her like something that didn't even sound like <laughs> glazed donuts, 12 glazed donuts. It was horrible. And we got to the, the front window after she took the order and she said it back to me and I had no idea what she was talking about. And I'm like, uh maybe and she literally she stopped and she started speaking to us in english because she knew like perfect english and i'm like oh my gosh i felt so embarrassed because it was me practicing it wasn't because i didn't think that she knew english but the uh -huh. fact that i had got it so wrong was just embarrassing to me uh, what, what did you end up saying I have no idea what I said. She was asking questions. And I was like, mm-hmm, yeah. And so we could have gotten like 
20 chocolate donuts and I would have never known until we got them back because I had no idea what I said. That's crazy. That's crazy. It mm -hmm. happened. Don't worry about it because yeah, I'm pretty sure while I was learning, I probably did some foolish things as well that, you know, but I mean, it's been so long ago, I can't even remember those. Yeah. They disappear a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they do. Okay. Let me see. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump into the Spanish part and I can get a taste of your Spanish. Okay. <laughs> that fine? Yes, yes. ¿Qué te hizo decidir ir a la Universidad de Puerto Rico? Era bien raro porque siempre, yo siempre quise ir como una escuela en el, en el este, ¿verdad? Como Florida, como eh, Nueva York, algo así. Pero un día yo pensé como, ah, yo quiero ir a Puerto Rico. O yo quiero aplicar a una universidad de Puerto Rico. Y era como, ah, lo voy a hacer. Y si me aceptan, pues me aceptan. Y si no, pues no. Pues me dieron eh, como congratulations y todo eso. Y yo, wow, me aceptaron. <risa> y so eso yo pensé como, ok, yo estoy entre Florida y Puerto Rico y... Yo tenía una situación con mi familia en esos momentos de, de la universidad y pagar la universidad y toda la cosa. So, en fin, yo dije, ok, bueno, yo voy a Puerto Rico y nadie me puede decir que no. Y mi mamá como, ok, bueno, vamos a Puerto Rico entonces. Y eso es como lo pasó porque yo creo que era como fate un poquito porque I had, yo tuve como otras opciones. Pero, en fin, pues, Puerto Rico era lo que me llamó. Y, mm. Ajá. Hasta, hasta suenas boricua también, tienes un acento ahí que suena un poquito boricua. Tú no sabes, porque todos los meses que yo llevo aquí, solo como siete meses, pero se pega. Sí, 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 el acento, el acento se pega también, porque yo recuerdo que cuando yo anduve ahí, yo estuve haciendo lo mismo uh -huh. que lo boricua, yo no cortando las palabras, pa, pal. Literalmente. <risa> Entonces, pero me gusta tu acento. Está haciendo gracias, bien. gracias. No hay de qué. Entonces, quiero hacerte esta otra pregunta. ¿Cuál fue el proceso cuando estabas aplicando, moviéndote? ¿Y cuál, cuáles fueron algunos obstáculos? Ok, el proceso era un poquito fácil, como, como la universidad de, de los Estados Unidos. Como, pero la única cosa que tiene diferente, creo, es el SAT porque tiene que, también tiene que hacer el SAT de, de español. Y yo no sé si es para que, para que saben si, si tú puedes hablar español, entender español, o si es solamente para, para tus sí. clases de español, no estoy segura. Um, pero además de eso, yo creo que esa es la única cosa que tiene diferente. Eh, tú tienes que aplicar, no hay, eh, no, no cuesta nada para aplicar, es, gratis, está bien fácil aplicar todas las cosas que tienes que necesitas usar para la universidad de los Estados Unidos, misma cosa y eh, FAFSA tam también, yo hablo de eso como eh, podemos usar FAFSA, eso es muy muy bueno uh -huh. <ríe> eh, yo no eh, encontré muchos obstáculos pero yo creo que puede ser si tú no hablas español el SAT, que, que sea en español, puede ser un poquito difícil. Ok. ¿Cómo encontraste tu apartamento? Yo lo encontré por clasificados online. Ah. Eh, en el momento, pues, yo visité a, a Puerto Rico en, en mayo del 2020 y yo vi unos apartamentos en esos momentos, pero yo no compré nada y... En los Estados Unidos, yo dije que, ah, yo voy al colegio ahí, so voy a buscar apartamentos, yo busqué en, en clasificados online y yo encontré un montón porque tiene, tiene muchos apartamentos, especialmente cerca del colegio. Eh, so hay muchos apartamentos y ahí lo encontré. Ok. Um, ¿Cuánto a ti te costó tu apartamento? Bueno, el apartamento cuesta 350 al mes. 
pero yo pago 400 porque yo también pago ella o el, el dueño eh, yo pago 400 por el apartamento y con agua y luz yo no sé si eso es como demasiado pero uh -huh. este apartamento de aquí tiene dos cuartos so, uh -huh. así que como pago para pa más cosas se supone <risa> para sí, sí. más espacio ok, no está mal ¿Es difícil para ti estar teniendo todas las clases en español? Yo creo que sí, es un poquito difícil, pero no tanto. Es difícil porque hay muchas palabras que, que nunca he escuchado. Como, es como aprendiendo en clase y diferente que tener una conversación con alguien porque están diciendo muchas cosas que, de biología y de la universidad. Ahora tengo eh, humanidades y humanidades como... Cuando hablan de, de, de todos los temas como Grecia y, y todo eso, es como palabras que nunca he escuchado, especialmente en ese sentido. So, sí, es un poquito difícil, pero yo siempre digo que es posible y que puedes hacerlo porque si tú estudias, si estás prestando atención, pues por lo menos tú puedes aprender y... y usarlo para la próxima vez, la próxima clase, pero al principio sí, está difícil. Ok. ¿Cómo dirías tú que es tu vida social? Yo creo, como dije, yo creo que por la pandemia no, no hay mucha... Mucho por hacer. Ajá, no hay mucho por hacer, no hay, no puedo ir a los sangueos, no puedo encontrar gente, ¿sabes? O, <risa> eh, yo no creo que mi vida social es tan... Al garete es tan bueno, pero no siempre estoy sola tampoco. So, yo creo que sí tengo una vida social, pero no como quiero por la pandemia. Claro que sí, como los demás, pero eh, por lo menos no está muy aburrida aquí. You're artist. I'm an artist. You get me? <laughs> so tell yes. me a little bit about your music. Okay. So I started making music when, well, I used to make music when I was younger. I used to go with my brother to like the studio and he would go to the studio. And I always said like, oh, I'm going to do that when I get older. I'm going to do that when I get older. And I kind of forgot, or not forgot, but I kind of just gave up on it after, after a little while. Um, and when I moved to Puerto Rico, I started singing again just out of like nowhere literally mm. and I started singing again and I was like oh my gosh I started writing songs and like I was like wow you know this is this is cool I remember doing this and that kind of yeah. thing so now I make music for you know I make music pretty often actually I just put out a song yesterday um no. but I think I sorry <laughs> no no yes yes Um, I think I like to say that I make music for people who, you know, don't have a voice or people who don't tend to speak up because, you know, I'm a type of person. I don't speak up a lot. I don't say a lot of things that I, I wish I could say, but I sing them, you know? So yeah. I say that I, I like to say that I sing for people who don't have a voice necessarily. Um, So that's most of my music that I would say. It's just, um, it's not necessarily like love songs or, you know, breakup songs or anything like that. I try and make it more like um, things that people can relate to, but um, things that are not necessarily that. Like yesterday, my song was, it was actually to help raise awareness for sexual assault victims. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my, like, I had a family member say, oh, it was a little too sad for me. It was a little too deep for me. And I'm like, hey, you know, that's the point. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, but <laughs> it needed wow. to be said. So I wanted to ask you something, right? Like where people can go and find you other than YouTube? I have Instagram. My Instagram and my Twitter are at, oh, it's Jada with a Z. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, And I have Spotify, SoundCloud, if you want to listen to my music, it's J-A-Y-D-A, -A, Jada. <laughs> um, Apple Music. I have Facebook. Um, I'm not on Facebook all the, all the time, but I do go on Facebook. Um, my Facebook is the official Jada. 
And yeah. Life too fly to be stressing. Stressin'. Throw trouble away and take your blessing. Blessin'. Every day is a new lesson. Blessin'. I'm not perfect, but I am progressing. Always shoot my shot, they step up, then I fade away. Wait. Music like the only how to get me through the day.